first and foremost, I'm a mom. And like any mom, I'm going to do a pivot out of nowhere into a shockingly violent story about sex trafficking. <laughs> and rest assured, every detail about it is real, except the year, where it took place, and who was president when it happened. <laughs> SNL at its tippy top best, best, best in its take, take down of Republican Senator Katie Britt of Alabama's State of the Union response, picking up on some fantastic reporting from journalist Jonathan Katz, which details a brazen misrepresentation made by the senator about that horrific story that became the centerpiece of her strange rebuttal. Britt implied that the graphic sexual abuse that was experienced by a real victim of human trafficking was a result of the Biden administration's immigration policies. But it turns out the abuse endured by the woman occurred between 2004 and 2008. That was when George W. Bush was president, and it didn't even happen in the United States of America. It happened in Mexico. The woman, Carla Jacinto, even testified about her experience to Congress back in 2015. Now, the Republican senator from Alabama failed to say any of that on that big stage, and she failed to clear up the misrepresentation of what she'd said on Fox News yesterday. Watch. Did you mean to give the impression that this horrible story happened on President Biden's watch? No, Shannon. Look, I very specifically said this is what President Biden did during his first 100 days. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Joining our conversation, former RNC spokesman and host of the Bulwark podcast, Tim Miller's here. Joining us at the table, former Democratic Congresswoman and MSNBC political analyst Donna Edwards is here. Basil still with us. I mean, look, Tim, when you are, and, and I, I, I hate quoting the old rules of politics because I know every day, I relearn it every day. It's like getting kicked in the side of the head that all the old rules are gone. But when you're in a hole, stop digging. Just say, yeah. I, I, I mean, she was responding to Joe Biden's state of the union. Of course, she meant to imply that it was his fault. Yeah, and then the first words out of her mouth there is Joe Biden. I, you know, look, I do think the old rules of politics do apply to some people. And I think the gravity is applying to Katie Britt. Um, you know, even in MAGA media world, uh, folks were dumbfounded by her performance, less the substance, because they don't care as much about the substance and the facts, but, you know, just the fact that it was so phony, right? And, and to use this woman, call it Jacinto's story, Right, and, and to do it in such a performative and fake performative manner to try to make a political point uh, when none of the underlying facts supported your political point, it's just so gross. You know, and, and the thing to me, Nicole, and I know that like sometimes we like to live in this fantasy world, but it's just you could imagine a, a Republican rebuttal from the early 2000s or a Democratic rebuttal from like the 90s Democrats that says, hey, you know, we, we need to we need to be concerned about the people at the border. We need to be concerned about their humanity. But we also you know, need to have stricter border security. We need to make changes to put in more enforcement. And the President Biden hasn't been aggressive enough. Like you can imagine a substantive response that is both compassionate and addresses an actual issue, a, a policy issue. These Republicans aren't capable of that. All you get is just unabashed cruelty from Donald Trump, planning mass deportations in camps, and then putting out somebody like Katie Britt to try to paper over that and put this uh, kind of sheen of, this phony sheen of compassion on top of his cruelty uh, with no substance behind it, with just totally fabricated lies. I and mean, the whole thing is pretty pathetic. And I guess the only thing that is encouraging is it seems like her, the backlash against her has come from all corners. So maybe this is one time when the, when political gravity will apply. I guess the problem, though, Donna, is that the lie is always heard around the world and the cleanup doesn't make it as far. And I thought one of the strongest parts of Biden's speech was when the Republican senator said that's true about the border section. The truth and the facts are that Joe Biden gave Republicans just about everything that they wanted in a border bill. Joe Biden actually got farther than my old boss, uh, my, both of my old bosses, McCain and Bush, uh, the president Obama, I mean, he got farther toward a bipartisan deal than any recent president. I, 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 think that, I think that holds up going back at least the previous three administrations. And Republicans killed it because Trump called them and told them to. The only people to blame for the chaos at the border are the people who listen to Donald Trump and Donald Trump. Well, that was the um, real danger in what Katie Britt said, because... 
here she was laying a, a false story at the feet of Joe Biden at the same time that she joined with her Republican That's colleagues right. and killed the border security bill. I mean, she was actually part of the, the group, at least on the fringe of the group, that was negotiating the bill. And she joined in killing it. And so, um, you know, Joe Biden said in that speech, um, are you going to fight about it or are you going to fix it? And clearly, Republicans want to fight about it. They wanted this fight for 2024 and for the election. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten the fight, except that the tables have turned. Mm -hmm. And then their hypocrisy was laid bare by Katie Britt and this bizarre story that never happened in the United mm -hmm. States, just never really happened in the way that she described. And she never cleaned it up. And so mm -hmm. this idea that somehow she cleaned up the lie actually wasn't true because she never cleaned it up at all. She still um, suggested that it was at the feet and the hands of um, Biden policies that resulted in that really horrible, uh, horrible story. And, you know, so Republicans really don't have a leg to stand on when they actually have the upper hand when it came to the fight on immigration. They don't have it at all now. I think that's right. Um, the, I mean, SNL is so brilliant. And you know they really on to something when they can hew so closely mm -hmm. to the fact. And they did that with, with great effect with right. Sarah Palin's actual answers in interviews. Right. And this story, again, this is actually what happened. She tells the story, wrong year, wrong president, wrong country. And one wonders why she would do that. Is she just not smart enough? Are the people that wrote the text of it just not paying attention? And, you know, and I, I actually just want to call attention to the substance because she said it because it works. The fear that she's engendered by making that point works, not with us, but certainly with a, a core group of, of uh, MAGA supporters. And just let me take something from Donald Trump's speech in Georgia on immigration Please. to go to the glasses. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> he calls immigrants an agony of our people, the plunder of our cities, sacking our own towns, violating our citizens, um, the conquest of our country. Um, and when you listen to language like that, you know, I think about a 1915 movie called uh, Birth of a Nation, which portrayed African Americans as uh, hypersexual and violent, and to the rescue of American virtue was the KKK. Now, it is very clear that, what, that Afri there are differences between African Americans and, and immigrants and migrants in this country. The through line, however, is the, the way in which white supremacists are viewed as being virtuous and being able to stand up to the virtues of our country. And when Donald Trump starts calling out white supremacists, tasking them uh, uh, implicitly or explicitly, mm -hmm. the bullets from those guns don't care about your backstory. And my concern is that even though we can, and there has been fun poked at that speech, no question about it, mm -hmm. um, traditional politics would tell you that she should have created a clear alternative to what Joe Biden was saying, and mm -hmm. she absolutely did not do that. Uh, but they use that story because that story works. That fear is a, that story is a proxy for fear. And the concern is that it will metastasize in a way uh, that goes well beyond the joke. And Basil, we should add to your list, poisoning the blood, that's right. because that's mm -hmm. what that mm -hmm. is about. And look, let's not let Katie uh, Britt off the hook. She's an attorney. Yep. She's a United States senator. And she should just know better. Yep. Um